Lizzo is currently being exposed and sued in a major lawsuit by her former backup dancers. There have been tons of allegations coming out lately about Lizzo and what it's really like working for her, claiming that she is a nightmare to work for. She's being accused of sexual harassment, body shaming, and more. These accusations have come as a surprise to a lot of people, myself included, especially because Lizzo is being accused of fat shaming her backup dancers and her whole brand is based off of plus sized confidence and being a big beautiful woman. Hey besties, welcome back to my channel. So a lot of information has been coming out lately about Lizzo and it's honestly so surprising. I never saw this coming because Lizzo always seemed like, you know, a caring person who just wanted equality for everybody. Before we get into the video, however, I just wanted to take a second to say thank you to everybody who has subscribed to my channel so far. I just started this channel like a month ago and I'm already almost at 180 subscribers. That's like feels like a lot but I'm really excited to see like where this channel goes and I thought it'd be a really fun activity for us to like connect if you guys leave a comment down below letting me know what your favorite song is. I will be really excited to see what all of you say but let's get into this Lizzo situation. Three of Lizzo's former backup dancers filed a lawsuit against her. The lawsuit was filed for harassment, hostile work environment, and major damages. TMZ posted this article explaining it, so I'm just going to read this article to you guys. It says, Lizzo, sued by ex-dancers. Working for you was a nightmare. Lizzo is a nightmare to work for behind the scenes, at least according to three of her former backup dancers, who are suing for what they claim were awful conditions on the job. The singer is named as a defendant in a new lawsuit that was filed by the three women who say they danced for Lizzo and her touring company between 2021 and spring 2023, when they claim they were either unjustly fired or forced to resign due to unbearable circumstances. Ariana Davis, Crystal Williams, and Noelle Rodriguez say they made it into Lizzo's orbit through her Amazon reality show, Watch Out for the Big Girls. And after making the cut, they allege they were subjected to a number of California workplace violations, several of which amounted to sexual harassment, false imprisonment, and interference with prospective economic advantage, among other claims. The accusations are being hurled in a few different directions, including some aimed at members of Lizzo's management team. But as it pertains to her specifically, she's being accused by these women of basically holding them hostage in a number of situations. Specifically, the women cite two different instances while on the road with her in Europe earlier this year. They claim she subjected them to attend nude shows in Amsterdam and Paris to the clear discomfort of her employees. During this Amsterdam outing, they claim Lizzo goaded her dancers to touch the nude performers on stage and interact with them in very vulgar and explicit ways. The dancers claimed they felt they had to do this in order to maintain their jobs. Another claim against Lizzo, her alleged badgering of these women over alleged poor performance and accusations of drinking on the job, which they say led her to constantly threatening them and their positions on her squad. The dancers even claimed Lizzo made them re-audition for their spots in a multi-hour rehearsal that sounds brutal. One dancer claims she was forced to pee her pants right there on stage out of fear of taking a break. One dancer also claims Lizzo was privy to an eating disorder she had and exploited that when she felt this dancer wasn't up to snuff, allegedly forcing her to talk about it. On top of all of that, these dancers claim they were constantly being stiffed on the money front, as well as having to constantly turn down other dancing gigs during pauses on tour. They're suing for major damages. The most alarming part of this is what happened in Amsterdam, so let's talk about that because it's really giving sexual harassment vibes. So I guess what happened was they were in Amsterdam and Lizzo wanted to go to a cabaret. She wanted to go to a basically a strip club with butt naked strippers who um, were putting on a show. So they went to this cabaret and I had never even heard about anything like this before, but apparently the strippers were putting 
bananas in their private parts which is so nasty to me like it's really giving you're gonna get an infection vibes but Lizzo's dancers were clearly uncomfortable with all of this but Lizzo forced them to eat the bananas out of the strippers hoo-hahs now when I say forced I use that term loosely because it's not like she was physically forcing them or anything like that but as they described it it was sort of just an overall known fact that if they didn't give in and do exactly what Lizzo wanted them to do, they would lose their jobs. And I could see why somebody would think, why didn't they just say no, like it should be that simple. But when you're in situations like this, it really is not that simple. It's not as simple as it looks. And you most of the times don't even realize that you've been like harassed or a until after the fact and Lizzo was also pushing them to touch other body parts on the strippers as well yesterday Lizzo was sued in California court for sexual harassment here's some of the allegations Lizzo made the dancers catch sex toys from the private parts of Amsterdam performers Lizzo made the dancers eat bananas from the private parts of the performers Lizzo made the dancers participate in a nude photo shoot Lizzo made them touch nude performers on one occasion Lizzo made the dancers dance for over 12 hours without a break one of them even soiled herself under California law an employer is forbidden from making or even suggesting that an employee perform sexual conduct. So yes, in my opinion, if even a little bit of this complaint is true, then Lizzo is toast. She and her employer's liability insurance company are gonna have to pay a large settlement to the backup dancers. Two of the ex-dancers have come forward with their own story in an interview that they gave to TMZ. Ariana Davis and Crystal Williams came forward to tell their side of the story. Crystal says that they were in a meeting with Lizzo when Lizzo was scalding them for drinking on the job. That's when Crystal raised her hand and told Lizzo that she nor anybody else on the team drinks on the job or before the job. Shortly after speaking up, she was fired. Ariana Davis came forward with her story and said that Lizzo had fat shamed her after she gained weight, which honestly blows my mind because Lizzo's whole brand is like being a big, beautiful woman. So it honestly blows my mind that she was over here fat shaming somebody. Mm, make it make sense because right now I'm trying to divide by zero. Ariana claims that she showed up to an event and had noticeably put on a few pounds and that's when she was taken into a back room and grilled on why she had put on weight. Being told, you know dancers get fired for gaining weight, right? That's when Lizzo and her team pushed Ariana to disclose personal information to them. She told them that she had been dealing with depression and anxiety and that she had also been struggling with an eating disorder at points in her life. One of the dancers, I believe it was Ariana, peed her pants on stage when Lizzo was making them do a 12 hour dance rehearsal with no breaks. Was I pressured to touch a new performer? Yes. Was I brought into a private meeting where I was kind of interrogated about my personal matters and ended up having to share very personal, personal things about myself regarding my weight? Yes. Were we pressured to do an excruciatingly long rehearsal that turned into a re-audition for the job that we already booked because apparently we weren't doing good enough? Yes, that is true. Did I? unfortunately go to the bathroom on myself on one stage because I was so terrified? Yes. There have also been claims that Lizzo threatened physical violence against her dancers. You allege that uh, Lizzo intended to hit you at one point after you resigned. Do you really think that she was going to resort or could yes. resort to physical violence? She actually balled up her fist like this to me. She started cracking her knuckles and she was like, you're so effing lucky that basically I'm not going to hit you. Her best friend, who is also one of the dancers, had to jump out of the couch and physically hold her back from coming and hitting me. So yes, I, I do believe that if she wasn't held back by that dancer, um, she would have hit me. Somebody else that was named in the lawsuit is Lizzo's dance captain, Shirlene Quigley, and she's accused of pushing her religion on the dancers as well as sexual harassment. Apparently, Shirlene would constantly talk about her religion of Christianity and try to push it on other members of the dance squad. She would go on and on about how it's wrong to engage in premarital sex and talk down any of the dancers who she believed were engaging in premarital sex, which is so weird, like, what? 
It's alleged that she would talk in great detail about her and her husband's sexual escapades, which is just so weird. And she would also talk in detail about how to give oral. Okay, y'all, so this is Shirley Quigley, and she is deeply connected to that lawsuit with Lizzo. Now, let me recap you if you just got in here. So Lizzo's being sued by three of her dancers in the Los Angeles Superior Courts for a bunch of different allegations, but specifically one against that Shirlene lady. Now, this is Shirlene's Twitter, and she is the captain of Lizzo's dance team on tour. Now, the lawsuit alleges that Lizzo's dance captain, Miss Charlene, was proselytizing to the other performers. And to proselytize means to convert or to convince. So when I took a deep dive into her Twitter and her TikTok, this is what I picked up. Now, on her TikTok, she says, I love Jesus, family, friends, dancing, hashtag Christian TikTok. And then kind of like the same fervor all over her Twitter, uh, dancing the dream, fearless, uh, loving God more than anything. But if you get deep down into her tweets, she is like, hardcore Christian, nothing wrong with that, but it becomes a big problem when you are trying to proselytize or convert people to Christianity when you're supposed to be really just dancing. Now, back to the lawsuit. So the performers who are suing Lizzo and this dance captain are basically saying that she was proselytizing to them and then she was basically um, shaming them for having premarital if you know what I mean. But at the same time, while she was doing that, here's the kicker. She was also sharing lewd sexual fantasies, stimulating and publicly discussing the virginity of one of the plaintiffs. So not only is Miss Charlene trying to convert people to Jesus, she's also a big fat hurt. Soon after the news of this lawsuit went public, Charlene posted this video on her Instagram. Hey everybody, I just wanted to get on here really quick and say, God is so, so good. God loves you so, 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 so much. No matter what you're going through, even if you don't love him, he loves you. Glory to God. I just want to remind you that he is love. He is truth. He is the light. He is the first and the last. And all things work together for those that are called according to his purpose. And I just feel so blessed. I feel so thankful. I feel so full of joy. I had such an amazing time on tour with amazing people. And I'm so excited to be home resting with my family and my dog after an amazing experience and yeah I just wanted to like tell everyone that God loves you and I love you and glory to God and I hope you're smiling and you feel joy no matter where you're at or what you're going through because I'm telling you God loves you bye Lizzo finally broke her silence and this is what she had to say as an artist, I have always been very passionate about what I do. I take my music and my performances seriously because at the end of the day, I only want to put out the best art that represents me and my fans. With passion comes hard work and high standards. Sometimes I have to make hard decisions, but it's never my intention to make anyone feel uncomfortable or like they aren't valued as an important part of the team. I'm not here to be looked at as a victim, but I also know that I'm not the villain that people and the media have portrayed me to be these last few days. I'm very open with my sexuality and expressing myself, but I cannot accept or allow people to use that openness to make me out to be something I am not. There is nothing I take more seriously than the respect we deserve as women in the world. I know what it feels like to be body shamed on a daily basis and would absolutely never criticize or terminate an employee because of their weight. I'm hurt, but I will not let the good work I've done in the world be overshadowed by this. I want to thank everybody who has reached out in support to lift me up during this time. In addition to the women who filed the lawsuit, two more dancers who used to work for Lizzo came out the woodworks and posted a story on Instagram basically backing up everything that the three women in the lawsuit had to say. Ron Zambrano, the attorney representing the dancers, told NBC News that his law firm is now looking into the allegations from at least six people who said they toured with Lizzo and on her Amazon Studios reality show. Zambrano told the news outlet that the allegations are regarding sexually charged environment and failure to pay employees on top of everything else. They say that some of the claims may be actionable but it is too soon to say at this point so i don't know how this is going to end but one thing i will say is that with things like this they oftentimes like hit the news they're all over the news and the media and then they just sort of disappear 
like get swept under the rug. So I really wouldn't be surprised if that happens with this case, but I can only hope that justice is served. And on that note, let me know what you guys think about all of this. What's your opinion on this? Let me know in the comments. Also, look at my nails. They're press-ons. I did them myself. I just recently started making press-on nails. It's like an old school vibe. So yeah, I think I'm going to start an Etsy shop. So if any of you would be interested in purchasing like some press-on nails on Etsy, I don't know if I should open one. So let me know if you'd be interested in that. But thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you guys tomorrow. Bye!